as soon as you hear psychic, you're like, I don't really want to deal with that. I am not telepathic. I'm pretty sure that doesn't exist. Well, tell me what I'm thinking of. Well, give me the lotto numbers. If readers could tell you what the winning lottery numbers are, do you think that we wouldn't be rich ourselves? I think that everyone is intuitive and everyone's born psychic. It's just kind of like building that muscle, you know? Don't ask me when you're going to die. Don't try to come in and see what I get wrong. And don't ask your reader to spy on somebody else for you. People will come to you and ask, is my boyfriend cheating on me? Really the question should be, is this relationship worth your time and energy? Definitely come with some type of objective or something that you'd like to accomplish. Maybe you want to get a better job. Maybe you want to find the love of your life. If you're a friend or a family member, don't come up to me and say, read me. Would you want to work for free at your job? It is customary to tip your reader, and a lot of people don't know that. Do tip your reader. So when I think of the word psychic, I think of the people who are in Times Square trying to flag you down. I prefer the word seer. I prefer intuitive counselor. You can be clairvoyant. You can be clairaudient, clairsentient, a medium. There's so many different types of being psychic. You can just be kind of sensitive in the sense that you are an empath and you can pick up on other people's energies. So unfortunately, there are predatory people in this industry. I have a huge issue with some of the storefront psychics that are neon signs because a lot of them, they definitely prey on really weak individuals. I was a victim of scamming. I've spent thousands. They'll say, your mother's cursed, and so you're cursed, and we need to get this thing off of you. If someone's asking you for $3,000 every month for the next three months, that's probably a sign that this is somebody who's just trying to use you to pay their rent. If there's like a word that's spelled wrong on their sign, that is a red flag, okay? <laughs> My experience in talking with the dead is rewarding, it's um, unique, and it's powerful. And I think it helps to give closure. Weird stuff can happen sometimes. <laughs> so I'm sitting across the table from this client, basically a demon face comes at me. And I actually had to ask this client to leave and give them a refund because I couldn't. This October, I was doing a reading for a girl that sat down, and we had these trees that were part of the setup for the psychic fair. And these trees had little lights connected to them. As I was doing the mediumship reading, the trees started flashing. But it was only two trees out of seven trees. And I knew that it was a message because she was literally sitting right in front of these two trees. She was like, yeah, my dad named me, and my name in Hebrew means tree and they stopped flashing once we acknowledged it. So these are all my little crystal balls. Beautiful blue calcite, which is really good for communication. This is one of my favorite ones to read with. This is my boy. Every crystal has a certain property. This one's for angelic communication. So I use this one for mediumship a lot. Each reader's gift is very unique and it's going to be a little bit different. I'm not gonna lie, a little bit of it is watching certain body language. You know, you pay attention to the words that your client is using. We don't really tell you your fortune. It's not really like that. Don't expect me to tell you what to do about whatever is going on with you. Like, I can give you an outlook, but I'm not gonna tell you, do not deal with this person or do not take that job because we have free will, the choice is yours. That's the beautiful thing about being a human, we have choices. I can talk to you until I'm blue in the face, but nothing's gonna change until you actually take steps towards changing it. Best thing to do is to keep yourself accountable in your question and what can I do to make this happen? What can I do to facilitate this change that I need? I think there is room for skepticism. I used to make fun of all of this stuff and it was the best lesson in humility for me when I realized I was wrong, very wrong. I'm here for a skeptic. If you're ready for a reading, I'll read for a skeptic. I'm here for that.